Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm working on my Apple iBook G3. This particular unit is the Indigo model released in 2000. It's unofficially known as the clamshell iBook due to its design, and although all the clamshell iBooks have similar specifications, the two key additions on these later revisions were the addition of a Firewire port and a composite video output port. It comes with a built-in carry handle, not something you see these days, and even today, 20 years later, where most laptop manufacturers would throw in a nondescript black boxy power supply, Apple paired the clamshell iBooks with its YoYo power adapter, and as you can see here, it let you neatly roll the cable away in the body of the charger. These clamshell iBooks have become somewhat collectible these days. Apple reportedly sold 700,000 clamshell iBooks in the less than two years that they were on the market. My unit's in great overall shape. The original battery's been refurbished with new cells, so it holds about a four to five hour charge. It does have a major flaw, however, so let's see what's going on with this machine. When I power this unit up, it appears to be dead. There's no boot chime, and there's nothing on the screen. But the hard drive is actually spinning. Let me shut it down and let's listen to it one more time. You can barely hear that, but the hard drive does spin up. I also have my capture card connected to the composite port, but there's no signal there either. Unplugging the power adapter and plugging it back in, disconnecting the battery and reconnecting it doesn't make any difference at all. So for the first few months that I owned this machine, I wasn't able to do anything with it. But buried deep in the crevices of the internet, I eventually found some information that helped me start this machine up. It won't start with the power adapter connected, but if I disconnect the power adapter and I press Option, Control, Shift, and then press the power button, it starts right up. And it'll also happily charge if I reconnect the power adapter. I was able to use the recovery disks to restore the system. It'll take about 70 seconds or so to boot into Mac OS 9, and it works flawlessly. As long as I disconnect the power cable and I press Option, Control, Shift, and then press the power button, I can always get the machine to start up. What's special about this key combination? It's actually responsible for resetting the PMU, or power management unit. So there's clearly something wrong with the power circuitry on the logic board, and that's what I'm hoping to look into today. See if we can figure out what's going on and get this thing working properly again. Rather than stare at the screen while this thing's starting up, let me skip ahead a little bit. Here we are in Mac OS 9 desktop, and in about this computer, I can see that this unit has 320 megs of RAM. 64 megs of that is soldered onto the logic board, so that means there's a 256 meg module installed. And in hard disk info, I can see this unit has a 60 gig hard drive. This model would have originally shipped with a 10 gigabyte hard drive, so it's obviously been upgraded at some point in its life. Just for fun, let me fire up iMovie and let's take a look at what it looks like. Even 20 years ago, it had the same fundamental design. The timeline on the bottom and the media window and video preview up on the top. I look forward to editing a video with this version of iMovie and sharing it with you guys. That would be somewhat comical. All right, well, let's shut this thing off and get to the teardown. To get to the power management circuit on the logic board, obviously everything needs to come out. This can be a tricky machine to disassemble, but as long as you take it one step at a time and keep track of all your screws, you should be good to go. There's a keyboard locking screw that needs to be turned between the F4 and F5 keys, and then pulling the tabs on either side releases it. There's supposed to be a spring holding down the airport card. Mine's completely missing, so I just pull it right out. Fun fact, the iBook was actually the world's first Wi-Fi enabled laptop. I believe this was a $100 upgrade option at the time. I'm glad that my model includes it. Keyboard connector just pulls right out. And there's my 256 megs of RAM. Unofficially, these laptops support 512 megs of RAM as well. Add that to the built-in 64, brings your total to 576 megs of RAM.
after getting all the back screws, three more in the front, a few cables to disconnect, and then we can start working to get that bezel out. Let's make sure to get the speaker cable as well, because that's going to come out with the front case. This is the first time I need the nut driver from my screwdriver kit. There are a few more standoffs that we're going to need to remove a little bit later as well. These little metal fins are all over the case and their job is actually to reduce interference. There's more shielding that needs to come off to expose the modem underneath. We're going to have to separate the display from the main body, so all these antenna cables and display cables need to come off as well. This is the last screw holding the display in place, so I'm supporting it with my other hand, and out she comes. I can already tell the shielding's bent, it's not meant to pop up like that when the screws come out. It's probably there from the previous hard drive upgrade, but we'll straighten that out later. So back in the day, if you were upgrading the hard disk, this is how far you would need to tear this laptop down just to get to the hard disk. Not what I would call user serviceable, that's for sure. This is an Apple branded Fujitsu hard disk. The date code says 2004, so chances are this came out of an iBook G4. Use whatever organization method works for you, but as long as you're not sloppy when you're working on a teardown like this, it's gonna go back together just as easy as it came apart. Once we get the DC board out of the way, the logic board should release. And it didn't take me but 10 seconds to find leaking capacitor fluid on the back of the logic board. And it just so happens to be underneath the legs of this electrolytic capacitor right here. This is apparently a 0.33 farad supercapacitor. There was what looked to be like a little bit more leakage on these two pads right here, but we just have surface mount ceramic capacitors on the other side of the board. I don't think it's coming from the top side. I'm not sure how it got there, but I can't find any leakage nearby. The only other area that I can find any residues on the underside of the DC inboard. There are no electrolytic caps right here. My only thought is that the residue from that supercapacitor leaked towards this direction. The streaking from the supercapacitor is towards those other components, but I'm not sure if that's how it got there. Anyway, there's no question this capacitor needs to come out. I did a little bit more research and I did confirm that this supercapacitor is responsible for some PMU functions. Let's take it out and put it in the component tester and see what value it reads. By the way, if the term supercapacitor sounds familiar and you're wondering where you might have heard that before, Xbox clock capacitor. The Xbox clock cap, which is notorious for failing, is a one farad capacitor. This capacitor right here is rated at one third of one farad. That's a funny coincidence, especially considering the original Xbox and this particular iBook were manufactured just about one year apart. Perhaps all supercapacitors produced during this period have similar longevity issues. Even after introducing some leaded solder to lower the melting point, this capacitor was still giving me a hard time coming out. I've experienced the exact same thing removing Xbox clock caps. When there's capacitor leakage, it just kills the thermal transfer. Anyway, the last thing I want to do is tear any pads, so I just kept carefully working it until it finally came out. Multimeter in continuity mode. And this capacitor is completely shorted. I could have checked for shorts before removing it from the board, that would have been completely fine. But the laptop was kind of working, I wasn't looking for a short, so I didn't think to do it. Let's have some fun with the component tester. This is a known good cap. It's rated at 10 microfarads. 
Let's flip it around, see if the component tester has any issues reading it, and the reading's within an okay range. This component tester is not a precision instrument, and this particular capacitor is from the bargain bin, so I'm not expecting much. Let's see what the supercapacitor reads. Unknown or damaged part, not surprising. Let's flip it around for the sake of science and see what we get. Twenty-five picofarads. Yep, this thing's junk. Using the information on the capacitor's label, I went on Mauser and I found an exact replacement. The capacitor itself was two dollars, and two-day shipping was eight dollars. But if that's all that's wrong with this laptop, and ten dollars is what it takes to get it working again, that's no problem at all. And while I'm at it, I decided to try and put an SSD into this laptop, so I bought a couple of parts for that. So depending on when those parts get here, hopefully next week or the week after that, we'll swap out the PMU capacitor on this laptop and we'll put in an SSD as well. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. While researching all this iBook stuff, I came across some pretty hilarious advertising. So, enjoy guys. It's a whole new category. Portable computers in the home. And who would have thought? Portable computers in the home. And who would have thought? When I look at it as it's closed, it's, you know, seamless. That's sweet, is what it is. Definitely going to be the purchase for someone who wants to be set apart. I'm actually digging the color. It's small and compact, and I can put it in my backpack. Gosh, why didn't somebody think of this before? You can just, like, take it anywhere. Light. Very, very sturdy watching TV in the bedroom. This would be really convenient in the bathroom. Convenient in the bathroom. It's bright. Yeah, it's got really good resolution. I would most definitely show this off. This is the battery. Six hours. Who needs to be connected all the time? It's nice, you can plug everything in it. You can have a zip drive, uh, probably just about any kind of drive. Probably plug a scanner into that, plug a scanner into that. Is there a CD player in this thing? Cool. Finally, anybody can get on the internet and they can do it from any place. Totally wireless, huh? It's the freedom to just go run around and do your thing. You turn on your computer and go on the internet and not have to hunt around for a port or anything. It's gonna be big. I want it. Orange. Blue. Orange. iBook. This is like a good start. This is the way the future should look. Now my dad has to decide if he wants to buy an iMac or an iBook.